Did you know that Americans consume an average of 400 million cups of coffee each day? Although we have developed dependent relationships with caffeine and other addictive substances, we are likely unaware of the impacts of these substances on our bodies. In this study, we examined the impacts of caffeine, sucrose, ethanol, and nicotine on plenarians to gain a deeper understanding of their impacts on behavior. Planaria are a common species of flatworm. They have a simple central nervous system, which makes them ideal subjects for observing behavioral responses. In this study, we measured five types of behaviors, also called stereotypies. They were C-shapes, head swings, corkscrews, head bobs, and tail twists. We also measured PLMV, which is a measure describing the rate of movement across a plane. To produce nicotine, cigarettes were used for a nicotine extraction procedure. 14 grams of tobacco leaves were removed from a pack of 20 cigarettes. After adding the tobacco leaves to a beaker, 300 milliliters of water were boiled and added to the beaker. The beaker was covered and allowed to rest for two hours. Afterwards, the tobacco solids were filtered out. The remaining nicotine liquid, 100 milliliters, was boiled incrementally to high heat, stirring occasionally. As the liquid began to boil, the solution was filtered. The solution was continually boiled and filtered until a dark brown paste formed. We then diluted this nicotine extract into a solution. The planaria were placed in a petri dish with a solution containing an addictive substance. There were also some samples that were untreated as controls. The planaria were then studied for two minutes and filmed. Afterwards, these videos were watched and any of the above stereotypies were recorded. Caffeine produced the most C-shapes, followed by ethanol, nicotine, and sucrose. ANOVAs were run on these data, and all substances produced significantly more C-shapes in relation to, to the control. This is in concordance with other studies, as caffeine is a strong stimulant. Ethanol is also strong, so it produced high amounts early on, but is a depressant, so it tapered off. For our measure of PLMV, the sucrose and the nicotine produced significantly higher values of movement in comparison with controls. No other values were shown to be significant. While C-shapes were our main measure, we also assessed four other types of behaviors. Values of head bobs and corkscrews were significantly higher for the nicotine solutions. Values for tail twists, however, were significantly lower for solutions of ethanol and caffeine. Head swing data was shown to be insignificant. Overall, nicotine and caffeine typically had higher stereotypy frequencies. Sucrose was shown to be consistently lower. In conclusion, the results of this study suggest that caffeine, sucrose, ethanol, and nicotine significantly modulate planarian behaviors. So before drinking that next cup of coffee or eating a sugary treat, take a second to think about how these substances might affect your body.